My name is Eitan. Um, I lead the gaming business division here in Israel. Um, gaming is pretty big or became pretty big in Google in the past few years and we're going to talk a bit about it. But let me start um, like with my personal perspective on everything that's going on here and I think in these two and a half days. So Israel is a gaming community. I think it's really cool that we're um, having Casual Connect here in Tel Aviv for the second time in a row and I think more importantly sponsored by local game partners and companies and companies from the ecosystem. Um, Iron Sources was before me and it's really, really fun to see. But I want to give you my two cents on why I think this is happening. And thank God it's happening because otherwise I wouldn't have my job. So uh, it correlates together. So Israel is well known for the startup, for being a startup nation. Do we have people here from abroad? Yeah, we have people here from abroad. A few people that are shy, but I know them, so it's okay. Um, Israel is known for being a startup nation, and it is. I tried being an entrepreneur before joining Google. It didn't work that well. I joined Google. But if you think about startup nation, you think about gaming like startup nation with a twist, right? Because it's a B2C product. Without insulting anybody, most of the products look pretty much the same. Content varies between game to game. But the heart of the game or the heart of the, you know, of the play itself, beyond being, of course, the content, is the data, everything that happens in the game, the stickiness, hopefully people investing with us. And a lot around the world data, and I'm going to talk about data in my presentation a few times. And if you think, uh, look at the broader scope of, uh, of um, Israel as a startup nation, a lot of the established companies, also in the gaming industry, so I have, uh, we have representatives in this room from 888, which is an ancient, not an ancient, but a very cool, real money gambling uh, company. But most of those companies were built and established on ad tech and data, et cetera. And I think a lot of that driven with good content and funding, and there are great investors here in Israel. And if you need connections to investors, let me know. That all that together made Israel a really cool um, gaming hub. And I hope, and I think we're only at the tip of the iceberg. But I didn't come to speak about investors, I came to speak about gaming. So let's speak about gaming and about the market. So when you work at Google, you always have to start a presentation, if this works, with data. This number, 56%, is monthly active users, at least once in the US on mobile playing games. Okay, this number is enormous. It's 56% of the US population. If we take China, China it's around 30%. Okay, on monthly basis playing games. Now 30% in China with small math is much larger than 50% in the US. And this number, the 10% is the growth. Now, if you think about Google, Apple, right, all our partners on Android, they're really fueling up this ecosystem. So I would really expect to see this continue growing. But I think this is the number that we all care about. 85% of the app market, not marketing, sorry, revenue in 2015 from the entire app ecosystem was on games. And we predict this to by 2020 to be a $75 billion um, business, well not business, but ecosystem. And this is a very conservative look at it. Now I think the most important part here, right, is that we wanna make sure for those that are developing games or are part of this ecosystem, that part of this money is on our games. And second, that we have enough stickiness to let them flow with us and uh, continue spending. So before going into marketing and how I think Google can help you guys throughout the cycle, I'd like to give you a few of my personal examples, let's say my day-to-day -day experience with the game ecosystem. So let's see how uh, cooperative we're here. Who heard of Pootie Pie? N come on, we're all from the game industry. Yeah, 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 more than, yeah. There are some shy people here in the room. Pootie Pie, this young Swedish 26-year-old, um, this guy, 26-year-old, has 13, no, almost 14 billion views on his channel and 45 million subscribers. Okay, let's pause this for a second. Now, beyond the fact, now he's developing his own games, but put that all aside. Think about the distribution channel. So he's the number one creator, the number one YouTube partner today globally. Right? Think about the distribution channel he has, the amount of people. Now, I don't know if you could throw it in, in the video itself, but what he actually does, he plays games. He has a camera shooting him play games, and then he talks funny, and he uploads it to his website. Now he's in all the fame of frogs. I don't know why, don't ask me, but it's worth looking up. But I think that's really cool and very correlated to Google and to YouTube. A second example, and this is a local example, Plalium, launching games like Viking, Thrones, working with you know, real mega celebs like Meg Megan Fox and mega brands like um, The Terminator 
And if you ask me before we go to Platica, I think these guys are going to be truly be the next machine zone or supercell in this industry. And third and foremost, Platica. So beyond the fact that they were just sold for $4.4 billion, which I think that's pretty good. Um, and I think that it's, it, well, it's the largest or one of the largest deals in, you know, in this space in this century. There were a few more, but not many more. But if you think about Platica, what they are giving into this ecosystem, part of this is bringing this conference here is diamond um, sponsor, et cetera. I think it's a big thing. So if we take all this, why as Google am I sharing all this? So I think if you look at Google, um, and our founders talk about this a lot, Google is a lot about working with developers and working with entrepreneurs and helping you develop throughout the cycle. And I think one of the things that we did, and this is only in the past year, year and a half, is understood that we have to start understanding how to work with the game developers and work with them throughout the development cycle to growing your game and, of course, earning money so we can fuel back the game. Now, during Casual Connect, I'm going to focus on growth, but we're going to have people from Play talk about develop, and we're going to have people from monetization talk about Firebase and about earning on our ad mob, etc. And on growth, we're going to have a really cool and unique talk by Barak Regev, who is the head of Cloud EMEA, and he's going to take the case study of how we worked with Pokemon Go and launch their game on the first one or two days. Now, let's take and deep dive into growth. Okay, so today marketing is becoming a nightmare, specifically in the app ecosystem, and I know there are a few marketeers here in the room, and it's becoming a nightmare because, you know, there are so many people we saw before playing games and usually or sometimes we have a niche game and we want to target specific audiences at a specific time at a specific moment and hopefully buy it in the right CPI that drives right revenue, right? And when you're a young developer and you have only one or two people doing this, this has really become something that's more of an, uh, 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 in Hebrew you say it's like uh, something that you don't really want to do when you wake up in the morning. And we're changing that. Why are we changing that? Because if you think of marketing today, and when I say we, it's Google, I think, is leading this, but there are a lot of tech companies, large and small, that are around this space. A lot of the marketing today is done on optimization and you know, going into the numbers and figuring out. But if you th see the shift, and I think this shift is coming from tech companies, a lot of it has to do that now better focusing on upstream funnels, understanding what's better happening in the game, what can better predict the user that's going to stay with us, the user that's going to spend money with us. So if you think about it, one and two here are more on the developer, right? doesn't matter the size. And three or four are on various tech companies. And of course, as Google, we want to be part of this game. But before I describe how we're going to do it or how we're actually doing it, I'm going to have to talk about machine learning. You have to excuse me. I probably, on every you know, lecture that we're going to go here, somebody's going to talk about machine learning. It's almost as popular as artificial intelligence and not as popular as virtual reality. But before, or instead of me talking, I want to show you a short video. In chess, the number of possible moves is about 20 for the average position. In Go, it's about 200. Another way of viewing the complexity of Go is that the number of possible configurations of the board is more than the number of atoms in the universe. If you ask a great Go player why they played a particular move, sometimes they'll just tell you it felt right. So you can, the one way you can think of it is that Go is a much more intuitive game, uh, whereas chess is a much more logic-based game. AlphaGo is our program to actually try and crack Go. We played the European champion Fan Wei in a five-game match. We have an estimate of how strong a program is. But of course, you never know. When you play um, a human player, um, they do all sorts of very interesting creative things that um, your programs don't necessarily do. So there's always an unknown. When we play the first game, I lose. Interesting. I think he was a bit stunned after the first game. And I think he was unsure as to whether he hadn't prepared enough or whether the program was really strong. I think after first game, maybe he don't like fight. He like play slowly, so it's why be, uh, begin the second game. I fight. Do mistake sometimes. Give me confidence. I think ah maybe I'm right. It's why for the another game I fight all the time. This now it's a complicated. Now it's a complicated. But I lose all my game. Yeah, so for those of you who haven't heard, I can show you on the previous slide. 
Um, Google's AI, it's a company that we bought called DeepMind. The guy that you saw in the video at the beginning is the founder. Um, and they beat this, so this was the uh, European Championship, but then they beat the uh, World Series or World Champion in China. This is like a big hit. But the reason I'm showing you this is I think machine learning is changing our industry on various ways. But if you, th if, you know, one more, one more pause on theory. If we think about stuff that's going on in data, math, statistics, the machine, you know, without insulting us, is doing a better job than us. Where our mind is doing like a still to date, it may change in the future, is where we're more creative, ambiguity, trust. And that is where the world is going. So if, now let's combine everything together. Think about your KPIs for those who are developing or ad networks, etc. Your KPIs on a game, and then connect that to billions of signals that Google you know, has through people going, and I'm going to talk about reach in a second, through our platforms. So I'm going to give you just one example. You know what's an important data set in play? People actually spending money on your apps, right? So if we can connect that with signals that you see in your game, that you predict that are going to bring in more valuable users, the combination of both is what can drive great ROI for us. So this is our vision. It's pretty simple. And I can tell you, I worked at Google for five years now, well, a bit more. I've never seen the company so focused on a vertical, like on apps and on games specifically. So this is our vision. It's not a theory vision. It is. And how are we going to do this? How are we actually working with game developers to help them grow? So on one hand, we're finding and we're defining the scale and reach. I'm going to touch upon that. We're talking about value. And the third, has anybody here managed a campaign on AdWords? OK, is it simple? No, it's terrible. It's more than terrible. But I think we're fixing that as well, understanding that we need simplicity to open it up to everybody and not the high end. So in terms of reach, OK, so this is a cool number, seven platforms that reach over a billion active users um, beyond the fact that we can target and find users on all these platforms. And I'm going to show you in a minute how we do that. There are a lot of signals that we can better understand on the user, user behavior, and as I said before, connect them with your signals, inject them into the machine, and hope we're finding the right audience. Okay, so you can't see the number for some reason, but the volume of apps driven by Google ads, and this is like the majority of this, I can't tell you the exact number, but the majority of this is around a year and a half ago when we shared this number in New Mexico, three billion ads on this network by pay ads using machine learning, etc., were already installed by Google. And without uh, saying who, we're pretty doing OK with our large competitor. On the second hand, simplicity. And this is, I think, where the company really did a mind or a shift in their mindset. So for those of you who haven't heard of universal app campaigns, just like yeah, one sentence on this is an easy campaign that all you do is you enter all your developer console or an AdWords account, like five steps and you're out. We do the creative. All you have to do is just set the bid, set the targeting, and the unique thing that we just brought into this is connected to machine learning. So once we do this and we understand your KPIs and you inject them into the system, we do one plus two and hopefully find the right users at the right time. Product madness, a great case study. I think numbers talk for themselves, 25% lower CPI, double the ROI. So we are seeing success in the industry on various partners. And thanks for Product Madness for allowing us to share this. And I think the thir third component, and maybe the most important one, and if there's one thing that I'd like you guys to take from here, is maybe talking about value. We are making a massive effort in the gaming space to make sure that you guys have much more time for what we call, as I said before, the upstream part of understanding the value, right? Defining users that are purchased already or reached and have purchase intent, etc., and connecting them and then bringing them into what we call the tech stack, the machine, and letting them find the right users. I think there's going to be more and more people that are going to be specializing around understanding the value and understanding where in the funnel do I want to predict that I have a user that's a user that I want him in my game. Now, there's an important question to be asked here, because if this is right, then how is going the world look like with our ad tech partners, agencies, um, people that we hire? And I want to share with you my personal 
uh, opinion on this. So one, it is going to impact the way we work. Not in the future, I think it is already now. So if I look at myself, when I joined Google and we started hiring people, it was a very small office. Now we're around 150 only on the business here in Israel. The majority of the people that we hired were people with online media expertise, a lot of media, like the word media was in the, in the job definition was there a lot. Today, for the past year and a half, two years, the majority of my team are people that have statistic background, mathematical background, data background, because a lot of the work that our partners, the ad tech companies, the people that we work inside and outside, and I think it's really interesting to think about how you want your teams to look like in a year, two years, etc., are around crunching the data and driving insights that can better help the machine learn and then, of course, acquire better. So maybe to summarize, before I have two, I think, cool announcements. One is, you know, think about where, you know, where you can do simple stuff, better understand your users, and let your tech partners help you get to the right place at the right moment, at the right time, with the right head, and hopefully drive good ROI. And the second is, if you look at the ecosystem, it's machine, you know, also in your games, out of your games, that's like, it's not by accident the buzzword. That's where the industry is going. So that's for my content. It wasn't that too long, I hope. And just two very cool announcements. One, um, we're going to have one-on-one -on -one sessions tomorrow with Google on various, so we have people here from play and monetization, etc. You're more than welcome to register. And I think it's a really unique because not everyone has the opportunity to open the door to sit one-on-one -on -one a half hour with people from Google and start building a relationship to help you support your games. We're going to have people with Play, how to get better uh, visuality on the Play Store, people from monetization, Firebase Cloud, etc. And then the second, and this, uh, I'm happy to be the first announcing this globally. I'm now launching, so it's not Google launching, I'm actually launching an indie game developer competition. Um, I don't remember all the details because I got this slide this morning, so let me read it to you. To celebrate the passion and innovation of indie game developers from Europe, this contest will reward the best indie talent with prizes and showcase that will help you get more, well, your game noticed by industry experts. So this is the first time Google is doing something like this in Europe. You can see there, like, an open showcase held on Saatchi and Saatchi, YouTube influence campaign in 50,000 euros, and this is like one list. We got like a whole doc yesterday, so I think this is really big, big news to the industry. You're going to hear it all around the conference. Um, I think the deadline for submission is like uh, December 5th, and we're going to share it at the entrance. We have a booth with all the information, so for those of you who are in this space, as I said, it's really important for Google to help promote the gaming industry, and we understand the value, so that I think this is a unique opportunity. Thank you.